Most of the time when we have a set of parametric equations, uh, they're fine just the way they are. However, there are times when we'd like to be able to take the parametric equations and convert them to an equivalent rectangular equation. Now, this isn't always going to be possible, and even when it is, uh, it, it can require some creativity to see how. So this situation, where x is equal to t, is the easiest to work with. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the functions without the of t part. This makes them a little easier to work with, but in the back of your mind, you have to remember that each of the x and the y here isn't a variable. It's a function of t, even if we aren't explicitly writing it that way. Now we can get to our desired rectangular equation just by substituting x for t in the y equation. And this gives us the quadratic equation that we'd expect. Right? If we looked at an example very similar to this uh, in, in the first part of this series, when we're talking about finding the graphs of parametric equations. Now, this situation is a little more complex, but I'm going to start it the same way, by collapsing the of t part so that we can just focus on the variables. Now, I'd like to use the same technique, where we substitute from one equation into the other. Uh, but we're going to need to work at it a little to make that happen. So first, I'm going to take the x equation and solve it for t by taking the cube root of both sides. Now I can substitute this into the expression in the y equation to get my final result. This is the cube root of x squared. Now, the situation here is a little different uh, from the first two, uh, which were more algebraic examples. Uh, now, we could solve the x equation for t, but uh, that's going to involve an inverse trig function, which we would then have to substitute into the regular trig, the sine function, and then figure out a way to simplify it. Now, when you're working with trigonometric functions, it's usually better to think about trigonometric identities. Our two functions here use the sine and cosine, and we have an identity that gives us a relationship between those two functions, the first of the Pythagorean identities. Now, if we substitute the x and y expressions into that equation, we'll get y squared plus x squared equals 1, which is consistent with what we saw in the earlier graphing lectures. The graph of the parametric equations was a unit circle, and x squared plus y squared is the rectangular equation for a circle whose center is at the origin and whose radius is 1. In other words, it's the equation of a unit circle. So try pausing the lecture here and working this one out on your own, then start it back up and you can see how I solved it. So this is another trigonometric example. So the first question I'm going to ask myself is, do we have an identity that gives a relationship between the secant and the tangent? Now, fortunately, we do. And another one of the Pythagorean identities is similar uh, to the one that I used on the previous slide. Substituting x and y into this identity gives us 1 plus y squared equals x squared. Now, if we move the y squared term over to the right side of the equation, we get an interesting result. Uh, x squared minus y squared, let me rewrite it in the usual order here x squared minus y squared equals 1 is the rectangular equation of a hyperbola. So since the two sets of equations, the rectangular and parametric, are equivalent, this means that the 
uh, parametric equations also represent a hyperbola. At this point, uh, you've hopefully got a solid understanding of what parametric equations are and the standard techniques for working with them. So if you've been following this series on YouTube, this would be a good time to visit the companion classroom on the White Crane Education website. That page has a laboratory area where you can experiment with the parameters of a class of parametric equations called Lissajou curves. And it has a link to the practice problems page where there are practice questions for you to work on, including hence solutions and short video explanations for some of the questions. So looking ahead, these parametric equations wouldn't be much good if we couldn't do all the calculus operations with them that we can do with rectangular coordinates. So in the next section, we're going to revisit our standard calculus tools, uh, for example, differentiation, arc length, and area, and see how we can make them work with parametric equations.